Welcome back. We're on part two of episode 88, and we have Mike Payton back. Yeah. <laughs> and we are now going to talk about the hot tags of the week. All the kind of shit that's happened that was interesting enough for me to throw in here. Four topics for this week. First up, TNA has gotten rid of their television championship. Uh, that kind of follows suit with when they got rid of their tag team division title for the knockouts. And we kind of ran down how that was kind of pointless. But t- I don't know. To me, this, I actually kind of like the TV title. Granted, I don't like the TV title. But I think that they still kind of need that mid-card spot. I think they've kind of morphed the X Division in a way into that with the whole um, Destination X trade-in for a title shot. I think they're hoping that the X Division could be that mid-card jump from the mid-card to the main event. I've always thought that it was possible because when you look at a lot of the stars that they have quote-unquote gotten over, they're a lot of them are X Division guys. I mean, you look at guys like um, Austin, I would, I Aries. Austin Aries, Jay Lethal got over for a little while, obviously AJ Styles. Black Rain. Dan- <laughs> <laughs> derailed me uh aj lethal aj styles obviously daniels and kazarian had their runs from the x division and they became upper mid card at best i mean the x division has the potential to make stars they just don't really they've just never put any emphasis on the actual division now that you've wiped out the tv title i think that 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 pretty much puts them in a situation where they need to invest more effort into establishing their x division which i'm com- i'm totally for and to be honest the the tv title is kind of just it it came out of the legends title and then was just kind of there it's it's never they've never actually put any emphasis any real effort or emphasis on the t- the tv title it just happened to be you know so i'm i'm all right with them getting rid of it plus i mean the le- when, when your champion is devon who cares <laughs> amen The thing is, the one thing that I agree with Tony about is you're fine. The X Division title's great for getting guys like Saban over, guys who are X Division guys. There's still a weight limit on the X Division. You know, uh, this is like coming from this week's episode of Impact. There's a weight limit still on that. No, there isn't. Samoa Joe was X Division champ. No, but this is after Joe. Well, Abyss, don't you. uh, not really. There, there's this whole issue with um, the Perception. exhibition. Apparently now there there has to be a weight limit on it. They're doing three way matches for the title. So it if they want to make it a true mid card championship for um, guys who are over that weight limit, they've got to take the restrictions off the division. Right. But well, I have no I have no issue with the X division becoming the the mid card, so to speak. Um, it's just the way they utilize it. At, you know, before it was their speciality title. It was similar to the way the, the Cruiserweight Championship was seen in WCW. Now, if they're going to make that jump, they've really got to look at how they're going to manage the division. But at the moment, with all the recent losses of talent, I don't think it's going to be going anywhere. I, I would agree with you, Burhan, if it wasn't for the fact that they never really established the TV title as that, as a stepping stone for the non-X Division guys. Like I said, the TV title was just there. They never really did anything. I would have loved for them to put the TV title on a guy like a Matt Morgan or a Mr. Kennedy or, you know, I don't know if RVD had the TV title, but put it on a guy who you care about, who matters – and then tell me that it means something, and I'll believe you, but they didn't. I mean, the most high-profile guy that I can think of that they had it on was Rob Terry for a little while. You know, and that, that's none high-profile. None of the titles matter. What? None of the titles I... matter. Look, you, you look at the world championship being hot potatoed from one guy to the next, or if you look at the, the tag team titles being hot potatoed between one team and the next, most of the guys who've been running with the tag titles at the moment are makeshift teams. But the difference Nobody is... Nobody... Is... The difference is, is that the um, those titles have been around longer. They do have a lineage. The TV title is only one or it's only about three years old, if I'm not mistaken. If you go back to when the Legends title was created, so it's about four. They, they really needed to develop some type of a lineage behind it, and the four years it's been around, they really haven't. That's because yeah, TNA just can't focus on anything. 
I mean, look at how stupid the <clears throat> idea of a global championship was. Yeah, I did. was so I was okay with that because to me that was that could have been their version of the Intercontinental title, which is what I originally thought it was going to be. Yeah. Like, you know, they have the U.S. title in WCW, the Intercontinental title. TNA has their global title, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. You know, if you if you have it be your mid card belt like that, I'm okay with that. But they didn't, like I said, for how many incarnations this belt has been around. They never really did much with it. I forgot that Eric Young dubbed it the of... Global Championship before it became the TV title. Me too. Me too. Boy, also, it was the irrelevant. fact is they kept hot potatoing. Yeah, they, they did. It was irrelevant. They kept hot potatoing it between guy after guy after guy. Then the the biggest piss they took on it was when Abyss won it for no uh, you know no reason no rhyme and then left. It's uh, the fact is it's TNA's mismanagement of talent championships and. You know, other stuff, which we'll probably get into on this show, that the major fact is if they want to create an emphasis for the X Division, for the World Championship, for the tag titles, use them better. Incorporate them into storylines. Stop, you know, putting together makeshift teams just so you have a tag team champion. Anybody else want to tag in for it? On your roster. No. I, um... <laughs> Yeah, na 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 Hey hey hey. Goodbye TV title. I will say this: if they were going to do that, they should have had aces and eights come out with the belt and really <laughs> either burn it or toss it in the trash. Like, do something impactful with it. Don't just say, "Ah, we're getting rid of it." Like, uh, get rid of it with style if you want to. If you if you're really going to do that, they should have spray painted the aces and eights. Or if you want to take. Or, if you want to take no, the biggest piss on it, Fine. have you, yeah. Hogan win it. <laughs> then have him spray Hogan win it. An I get the pun. Yes. You wanted them to do something impactful. Mm, yeah, it's not a good one, though. With style. Mm. I want AJ to do it. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Matt Morgan gets his release from TNA. So, obviously, they went from... <laughs> He's like their main guy to he's just kind of hanging around Cornette to he's a main guy again to he's off TV to he's a main guy to tag team to main guy to off. They never really had a, an idea what they were doing with Matt Morgan either because TNA ADHD just goes all over the fucking place. And that angers me. Well, now that actually, Magnus is the guy. That actually angers me more than Matt? anything because I've always been a Matt Morgan fan. Always been a Matt Morgan fan because... And I'm going to just say this in the form of a question. The man is a seven-foot-tall, legit giant. He can cut a decent promo. He's not the best talker, but he's better than most guys his size. He's, I think he's, being very generous with the word decent. Uh, I'm being generous. Fine. Extremely. He, he's decent in the ring. I'm being more generous with that. But the point is, for what TNA can get, he's not bad. Why is it so hard to put a belt on this guy? I mean, if you'd give, if Vince McMahon honestly wanted, to, if you'd, have, if this guy was in T and was in WWE before Brock Lesnar came around, because that's one of the reasons why they didn't really push him was at the time they had Brock Lesnar in there. But if T, if WWE had signed this guy then, they would have put the belt on him and pushed him to the moon. Why did I never understood why TNA never just did that? He's a seven foot giant. Get the belt on him, have him destroy everybody around him. Boom, you're done. It just, to me, it always seemed like such a waste. And it's unfortunate, really. You know, they could have done well, so much with a guy the that... Fact, Go ahead. It's because of the fact that TNA just don't know how to use any talent besides, you know, Dixie Carter. That That's literally... It. I'm, I'm waiting for the time when they have Dixie Carter win all the belts. Because this just <laughs> seems like a Dixie Carter vanity <laughs> project. She pulls a like curt angle. It's true. Like, look at AJ Styles. Look at AJ Styles. Wins the world championship. Next is considered a mid carder. Then it's considered an X division guy again. Then it's considered a tag team guy. Then it's considered like world champ again. And then they hot shot him back and forth, back and forth. Now he's supposed to be doing some sort of sting gimmick, but loses most of his matches. And then walks around holding his hand up, saying that he's on his own and all that bull crap. Then they toss him aside. So they've got the main event mafia in now. We're not even main event guys. Well, to be fair, and yeah. I've been thinking about this for a while now, and I'm going to throw the question out to you guys. A guy like AJ Styles, he's been with that company for pretty much almost a decade now. 
just about. I mean, he's been there since the beginning. They've been around since '02, so yeah, a little over a decade. Have they done all they can do with AJ Styles at this point? I mean, no. I've been watching what? <laughs> no, most certainly not. How can they do all they've done when they've done nothing? I mean, they've put him yeah. in every position they could. He's been the comedy guy. He's been a heel. He's been a face. He's been in tag teams. He's won the main title. He's been in the mid-card. He's been in every spot they can put him in. I mean, what more can you do? I mean, I almost feel like he's kind of getting... He should, In my opinion, he should get the kind of treatment in a way that John Cena does in terms of being one of the considered the top guy in, in TNA. You know, why do why do people get upset with John Cena being in his spot for so long, but not AJ Styles? Well, look who loses a lot more. AJ Styles was never Styles, in a spot. And Styles isn't really booked Styles. over the rest of the roster either. He's just kind of there all the and, time. And AJ yeah. Styles was in Ring of Honor. Yes. I think because he yeah. was in Ring of Honor. But he hasn't yeah, really like a pass. done anything of note as like a top guy. I mean, he's had his world title reign, sure, but it's not like he was ever put in a real prominent position. He's more of an X-Division oh, fixture. Yeah, he was the guy who was given the world title when they needed something, someone to pass the championship on to somebody else. He's the Bret you know, Hart. He was world champion. With, yeah. Can't, he, he's the workhorse who though, he could be relied on to have awesome matches with Shimoa Joe um, and other guys on the roster because he never really had a bad match. But to rely on him to carry the company, no, that's Hogan's job. You know, when we see Hogan win the title eventually Brother. from Bully Ray, because that's going to happen. You know, going, uh, I, and seats. I, I agree. Uh, going back to Matt Morgan real quick, I always it always bugged me why when they had that storyline with Abyss and Hogan, when Abyss was kind of Hogan's guy and oh, he was please. going around wearing the Reagan stuff. <sighs> no, oh, there was God. a I understood why they were doing it. They wanted to get a guy over via Hogan. They wanted to show that Hogan can get a guy over and they chose Abyss. I didn't understand that. To me, they should have... To me, that would have been a prime spot for Matt Morgan, you know? M mainly because Matt Morgan's more marketable than Abyss. I mean, you can market a guy like Matt Morgan in press conferences and on billboards rather than a guy like Abyss, you know? <laughs> I, I, I always... That always bugged me, like, why they didn't go that route. Because he... It seemed like they were trying to after a while when, when they gave Hogan... When they gave Morgan Hogan's, um... Robe... That, that rope thing that he that he um, supposedly wore at WrestleMania. It seemed like they were going that route for a little while. It's just they dropped the ball with him, and that's so upsetting. Because, like I said, I'm I'm really a big fan of his. Anybody else want to tag? They the ball with yeah. everybody. The company's clearly going bankrupt. They're right. letting people go left and right. Brandon or Payton? No, but as I said. Na 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 na. Hey hey hey. And nothing of value was lost. Yeah. That's all I really gotta say. Well, I got one last. I got one last question I want to ask to you guys. Um, given all the stuff that TNA's supposedly in, as far as financial trouble, and given all the financial trouble Sinclair's having with Ring of Honor, which one do you think is more a viable option? Ring, Ring of, of Honor. Honor buying Ring of Honor buying TNA or TNA buying Ring of Honor? Oh, neither. Neither. They're just both WWE yeah. buying both. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think Ring of Honor has a better chance of surviving if like someone else wants to scoop in and buy them. They're they're a better investment. I thought that was the question you were going for. No, like if it would 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 you uh, would would um if given the chance, do you think Sinclair would buy TNA or would Panda Energy buy Ring of Honor if, why, if either one was going to get bought? Why would they do that? Pan why why would either one of them want to buy the other one at this point? Wait, TNA is owned by a company named Panda Energy. Yeah, yeah. fucking hilarious. Yes. <laughs> and it's a billion-dollar company as well, so them having financial trouble is actually quite laughable. <laughs> well, it it is financial trouble for that sector of the company, and when you're a company that's that big, when you see a sector of your company that's failing that bad, you, you're gonna want to kill it. Yeah, that's like that's why Turner killed off WCW. It's exactly what we said yesterday on Keeping Kayfabe, and I even uh, put forth the. Uh, postulation that if Spike TV was really seeing declining ratings from TNA Impact, would they consider canceling it in favor of maybe giving ROH a TV deal? Because certainly, you know, if you're, you want to, you know, keep a wrestling audience around, uh, that would be the best brand to do it other than trying to come up with... Um, I'm going to debate you on that because... Debate. As as little ratings as TNA gets for Impact Wrestling, 
Ring of Honor gets just as little in terms of their their internet pay per views, which they don't really do live pay per views anymore. Um, in terms of their syndicated package that they've got, I mean, yes, TNA doesn't have much of a foothold, but it's more of a foothold than Ring of Honor does. We lose Miguel. Excuse me. You you had cut out for a second there. I was uh, gonna I say that. Heard him. Uh, okay, for well for Peyton then. Um, as much of a foot, as much of a small foothold that TNA has in terms of wrestling audience, it's still a bigger foothold than ROH. ROH is still a very niche audience. Yeah, but TNA know? has the access to that audience, and the fact is that TNA has had that exposure and that chance to grow in that environment for ten years now, and they haven't grown at all. They've been sitting at the exact same rating. As a matter of fact, they're dropping. You could take a new fresh company yeah. that doesn't cost as much to air because their production costs are less, all the talents contracts are significantly less, and you can you could take a chance on that, start fresh, see if that has a better chance to grow. And at the least you're paying less to have the same show on. In all honesty, and I, I thought about this when I was thinking about these financial troubles, I think both audiences are pretty much grown as far as, as much as they can. I, I don't think I don't think the wrestling audience is big enough to where you can grow either audience. And I think the ratings have proven it in TNA and ROH's case because they've been the same. You know, they've pretty much they've had TNA has had the same number of audiences, give or take a couple thousand, that they had five years ago. They haven't grown that audience yet. And ROH I can't imagine that they've grown any more. I mean, maybe with the Sinclair deal they have, but I maybe they're just maybe there's this a is thing just... that you what there's a thing you haven't established in in regards to this. You're comparing apples to oranges, and the reason being is look at Sinclair. Sinclair Broadcasting have access to to a certain amount of stations, right? Yeah, but Spike TV is a syndicated network on cable. Yeah. So, which one gets the wider audience? Uh, Spike. There you go. So, in, in terms of investment, I would have to go with Payton in this one, just by, you know, bearing like the fact his, that... Like it was his idea. Uh, Ring of Honor has grown. <laughs> what the fuck, it was my idea. Ring of Honor has... <laughs> okay, well, when my... Payton's the one making the argument... No. This was about Matt uh, Morgan, right? I... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Matt yeah, Morgan slash that, TNA's uh, problems. TNA always has problems. In terms of they that, always that's, will. That's just gonna happen. Oh, hey, maybe Matt Morgan go to well, Ring of Honor. Maybe. They well, they brought got, it together. Well, you of... happy, Braden? <laughs> <laughs> they already have a Matt Morgan. It's Michael Elgin. I thought that was Tommaso Ciampa. Maybe Matt Morgan can go back to episode 85 when he still was in TNA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on here. Randy Orton is going to get a divorce from his wife, Samantha. And uh, this actually, I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but the details that are supposed to be, of course, they're supposed to be fact, but we don't know for sure, from TMZ. This actually sounds like one of the most moderate and it makes sense out of all these kind of like celebrity divorces that I've been hearing over the past couple of years and everything like that. I mean, uh, the details here, they were like, um, he gets to keep pretty much the, all the cars except for the one that she was driving. Okay. He gets to keep like the majority of his money and all that, but she gets to keep like her jewelry. Okay. He has all of his rights and, everything to like his career makes perfect sense. He pays child support. She gets full custody and he gets uh visitation rights for their daughter. Makes sense to me, right? Homeboy had a fucking prenup. I'm just I'm supposed to do it. I'm just surprised she didn't divorce him sooner considering he got, he got their house invaded to by triple H. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, so, if my husband got somebody to come to my house and start breaking down my stuff and throw, did he throw him through a window? Yeah. I think he might've yep. like thrown him through a window or something. If that happened, I would have divorced him like that. I'm just saying oh, she, she's God. better. Th she's better th for that. Dynamite drop in Miguel. Dynamite drop in. I'm gonna say, I wonder if she's gonna go to the papers with. <laughs> Clearly, this yeah. just shows that being a sports entertainer is not really the life of a family man now, is it? No, no. You're on the road 300 days a year. Um, you know that's not really conducive to healthy relationships. That's no. why you have to. That's why you have to. 
that's why you have to do like Triple H and marry within the company. Exactly. Just that's why all wrestlers date other wrestlers. Well, if you think about it, maybe the reason that she's leaving is because Big Show scared her off, or scared <laughs> off the fake version of her. No, maybe it was CM Punk. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was CM Punk. Didn't Big Show do a whole big thing with a bus? No, it was Punk. Oh, that was Punk. That was that's, cool. what, that's what he's saying. Ain't that a kick in the head? Yeah, oh, that was Big Show. Wow, I'm no. fucking tired for that joke. Never mind. Wah, wah. <laughs> so, uh, in well, more maybe exciting news, scared her off anyway. Maybe it's just a in, scary. Fucking in game. more exciting news, Randy Orton liked one of my posts on Facebook. Randy <laughs> Orton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you see the post I put in our group? Randy Orton liked a post, and I put on some wrestling group. You know, this is wrestling. It doesn't matter if, unless it happens on Twitter. <laughs> Touche. It has, has to happen on Twitter or else it didn't happen. Unless it's Kurt Angle, then it didn't happen anyway. So <laughs> it happened. Hey, yeah. Did Twitter, did you guys hear that Ooh, a performance center opened? Yeah, <laughs> we did. I heard it in like five different social networking sites that'll link me to Twitter. <laughs> oh my god. My favorite one of that was fucking Cole Cabana saying, at least I don't work for a fucking company that makes me tweet pointless shit. I love Cole Cabana. <laughs> Hi, uh, Cole Cabana. That's got to be one of the easiest jobs ever, though. You're not being used on TV, but you just got to promote their fucking their new institute they open and tweet it. Sounds like fucking easy work to me. It's probably I think the Zack Ryder's very happy to even get to use Twitter. <laughs> I think it's probably it's probably the same guy who tweets for Vince McMahon. <laughs> I refuse don't... to believe that Vince McMahon actually tweets. I no, he, he doesn't. Uh, all I had to read was, don't the Flintstones and WWE make great tag team partners? And I knew that that truly wasn't him. <laughs> Can you picture, like, Vince McMahon being in his boardroom, like, yeah, like, ah, how, how's that how's that chirping thing for me going? <laughs> Is you, know, it <laughs> you know, the thing was the bird. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just imagining I'm just imagining Vince poking a computer like Shane, like uh, Shawn Michaels in that one segment, just like with one finger, just tap. Tap, tap. He's got a he's got a tweet. <laughs> One hundred right, so characters are you are fired. Sucks for Randy Orton to get a divorce or whatever, but hopefully that all works out. And finally, the last one I wanted to talk about, and I want to make sure that we don't talk too much about this, but I did want to address it: the Bray Wyatt debut and the fact that people were chanting Husky Harris. Uh, this made people go fucking crazy. Uh, I've been hearing just constant stuff about, um, you know, the, the Husky Harris chants are the reason what's wrong with wrestling nowadays and all that. And to an extent, I completely agree because it's unnecessary to chant that in that kind of situation. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I Husky do, Harris. I do want to address another point about that, which is, I hope people don't do, and I know that they will, the same thing that they do all the time in this kind of situation where Bray Wyatt is immediately going to be the next world champion, and oh my god, he's going to win Money in the Bank and replace Kane and win fucking Unify, all the titles, and all. And it's like, well, calm the fuck down. The guy had a cool debut. Let's leave it at that and hope that it keeps going as good as it with the reaction that um, that chance getting people are thinking the exact opposite they think that he's going to be dancing with uh, the dancing bears within half a year really you've been here i've been here here just nothing but negativity i think the i think the reason they think it's negative is because they're afraid that if the Tusky Harris chants keep going, that it's going to prove to Vince that Bray can't get the gimmick over, that he just he just doesn't have what it takes to get whatever gimmick they give him a over. Regular, a regular day Tensai. <laughs> yeah. Except way, way better, but it's basically the same circumstance. Husky I, Harris. Which is, not, which is not his fault. That's WWE's fault all the way for giving him that awful name. I mean... How else? Do, how do you expect somebody to get over when you've created the stigma of Husky Harris? It'd be like if they brought in Lucky Cannon in to come in, and they give him, you know, a really serious, cool gimmick. People are still gonna friggin' chant Lucky Cannon. No, but well, wait a minute. You know, when when true. Kane first came around, no one was going Isaac Yankum, Yankum. because right. because pe- people weren't as smarky as they are now. Yeah, yeah, fuck Baltimore, you bunch of smarks. Yeah, yeah but cheering the Shield and all that. Be, they're doing it wrong. Doing it to be the douchebaggly. Uh, just obnoxious. Like, just, well, look how smart we are. We knew who he was before this. Now let's just chant like douchebags because that makes us cool. It's like, no, no, it does not make you cool. 
It wasn't all. even the whole crowd at first. Like, it was one guy who started it, and then it just happened to, to build up. Well, well, it listen, sounded like a group of, like, an, an obnoxious whole ten people in the crowd that were just really trying to get heard. But to it, you, please Super just fuck off. Dragon. It, it could have been much worse. Rather than the fans chanting the name, they could have had it appear on the Titantron for someone else coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it, Sin Cara, you, you had, had one job, job. Sin Cara. <laughs> Super Dragon. Anyway, um, just hopefully that they don't view it in the light of like the Goldberg chance for Ryback or even the Albert chance for Ten Sykes. If that continues, eh, I don't think that's going to do the gimmick any good whatsoever. And I think it's something that none of you should probably want to continue to see happen either. I love this gimmick. Although you know I will, what? Say, what I I will say. No, go ahead. What I need to do is get some killer promos from the guy. Like cement him on the roster with his feud with Kane, and then see how it goes from there. I did hear a rumor that they're thinking of turning the whole White family face, which oh. I think is a stupid move. Their whole gimmick it's, is it's the same as yeah. So I don't know how they're going to do it unless they get a bunch of rappers with them or something, or you know, they 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 end up getting uh, Henry Godwin with them or something. I don't I don't know what they're going to do, but to me. In terms of the gimmick, in terms of the way everything's going, it's been fine. It's not, yeah, apart from the stupid chants, there's, there's not really much that's actually saying how bad the gimmick is because it's an awesome gimmick, and I think he's doing rather well with it. Just give him time, and I think people need to stop, you know, guessing if he's going to be the new WWE champion or if he's going to be the next on the unemployment line within a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they just need to let it happen, right. see how it goes, and stop bitching. Just take it for what it is right now, which it was cool. And mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe next week it'll suck. Maybe next week it'll be even better. But my God, man, I really, I'm like, I'm so sick of hearing like one way or the other when it comes to that. That whole Husky Harris. Oh my God, he came and they, they did the Husky Harris chance, and that means that he's doomed. Oh man, because one chant kills you. Or Husky Harris came as Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt's now going to beat the fucking Undertaker at WrestleMania and it's like, you know, give me a break. Like, slow will, build. People just will, need to give it a rest and just calm the fuck down. That's that's as far as it needs to go. They don't need to sit there and start bitching and moaning about it. You know, I understand everyone's in the know. I understand that. We're all in the know. That's why we're doing a fucking podcast. But the same... You know, the the same idea here is you can't sit there and and estimate whether this guy is going to be the biggest thing in wrestling or if he's going to be the biggest dud in wrestling. Let him do his thing. You know, when I was watching him on NXT, he was amazing. When I was watching him in FCW, he was amazing. That's because I actually looked at him. I'm not going to sit there backstage pretending I'm in the know to know if this guy was well received by Vince and Cole or if he wasn't. Just let him do his thing. Let the Wyatt family... Get out there and do their thing. Stop trying to estimate the next shield. God. I I will say one little nitpick that I have, and this is, I'm almost positive this is on WWE, but I'm going to make it anyway. When they started that promo, he had a regular, like, fire-lit lantern that he blows out, and then he comes out to the ring, and then it was an LED lantern. That's just such saying, a trivial thing. I know Come it's a on. trivial thing, but I noticed that's... it as soon as he came out. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, that's not a fire. That's not um, a fire lantern. Oh, did, 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 did you, you know that, that, that lightning bolt that came down when the Undertaker got buried alive wasn't an actual <laughs> no, lightning no, no. bolt? Miguel, I, know, I think I'm... you're missing the point. The old school lantern has to be used at the Wyatt residence only. When you're in a more upbeat arena with all these people with their technology, you got to match it with the lighter, uh, with their lantern. I think it just proved that Bray Wyatt <laughs> well, is, is a godsend to WWE, and he even can turn uh, real lanterns into fake ones with magic. <laughs> he can turn flames right, into light right. bulbs. Yeah, all right, that makes sense. That makes. He can turn sense. LEDs off with blowing on them. I mean, that's <laughs> that's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's just that. like how Kane can turn on uh, fire pits and stuff like that by just raising his hand. Oh, that's a magical power I wish I had. <laughs> truly, truly. That would take me so much. You just money. walk into your living room. Can, can oh, I just I say, I would do anything to go back to a time when the internet did not exist. <laughs> you mean just for wrestling, right? Yeah, I was going to say, like, where would I get my porn then? <laughs> yeah. I... Just for wrestling, except for wrestling podcasts. You would have to spend 20 bucks to go see Sonny. I'd have to actually go out and buy a magazine? That That's so barbaric. 
Nothing? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, I, as much as there are great things that come with it, there are the negatives when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, f- you know, for for the time being, I think we all liked the Bray Wyatt thing. We talked about it on the pre-show. Uh, not the pre-show, the post-show overall. We all think it's cool. We all think that there's potential. But we all are like, you know, it don't, you know, go absolutely crazy yet. I want to see a Bray Wyatt movie. I want to see this. I want to see somebody write a, like a horror movie around these characters. Man. The origin story of the of the Wyatt family. That I would go out to see that movie. I'd buy that DVD. Starring Hornswoggle. <laughs> no, it had, no, let's not talk about that. But you like no. have eyes for the WWE or something like that. Yeah, you get a good enough writer, and you write like a cool, like sleazy horror redneck story about these guys, man. Just like something like on the level like an I spit on your grave, only PG. And I'd watch that. I'd that would be that'd be great. I think those guys would all <laughs> no, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's the new about. Marine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make that a bit. Oh, man. All right, guys. We're going to move on to part three, which is now going to have a little bit of a different kind of layout because I'm switching it to where now part three is going to include some different kind of segments out there. So next part is going to have the Did You Know parody, the monthly mailbag, a quick Bleacher Report card, and a plug for something coming your way. (laughs) 